Hello, I'm Bernadette Wagner, and I'm pleased to welcome you to today's episode of Healing Hope and Health. As previously mentioned on this program, Hospice of Washington County employs a team approach involving many disciplines in order to assure the highest quality care for patients and family members. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Dean Pryor. Dean is the spiritual care manager for Hospice of Washington County and has been with the organization for the past seven years. As part of the hospice team, chaplains make spiritual care a priority. In caring for the terminally ill, they recognize and respect different religious beliefs, faiths, tradition, cultural practices, always striving to meet the spiritual needs of each patient and their family members. It's a pleasure to have Dean on today's show to elaborate on the critical role played by the H Hospice of Washington County Spiritual Care Managers. Dean, thank you for being here, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having us. So Dean, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about what's involved, uh, what is encompassed through the spiritual care program at hospice. So basically, every patient that we minister to uh, is assigned a chaplain, a spiritual care provider. They will go and visit the patient and family, minister to them, reach out to those that perhaps are in nursing homes, uh, home patients, assisted livings, and they'll provide them with spiritual care perhaps that they are not receiving currently. Uh, and we, we gear that toward the end of life, knowing that the end of life is very difficult and the process of that and watching that can be very stressful on the caregiver and family and the, as well as the patient. So we're there to be a presence to help during that time. And the spiritual care providers have special training in end of life issues and bereavement, is that correct? Correct. Not only do our spiritual care providers have college degrees and a seminary degree, but they also have further education that deals with the end of life through clinical pastoral education, uh, counseling those that are at the end of life. And so they're well trained to be able to help in those times of need. Okay. And uh, it, what exactly does a typical visit uh, to a patient's home look like or to a, to a facility, wherever it is that they call home? Sure. So once a patient's enrolled at Hospice of Washington County, the spiritual care provider is usually there within five days. And within the first five days, they'll do an initial assessment to see what the patient needs. Perhaps the patient just likes to talk about the weather or is a big sports fan. And so that spiritual care provider will, will go through that journey with them, uh, keeping it very basic and simple. And then if they have spiritual questions along the way at the end of life, that spiritual care provider will uh, help and assist and counsel them through those difficult times. And how, d how is it that the spiritual care providers work in tandem with the, uh, the, fam the family or the patient's uh, church members, church leaders? Right, right. We're not there as spiritual care providers, obviously to take the place of a pastor, an uh, imam or a Jewish leader or whatever spiritual leader that the patient has or does not have. Mm -hmm. uh, the chaplain, the spiritual care provider is there to assist more as a supplement, as a vitamin, you know, an additional uh, help aid to be able to provide that, that specific part of end of life care. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the spiritual care that you provide just for the patient? No, not at all. Uh, the patient, obviously, we, we, we zone in and try to help them through that. But many times at the end of life, the patient may not even be oriented. They, they may be unconscious at that time. And so we are there to help the family, perhaps the spouse who is grieving uh, an upcoming loss of, of their loved one. And so we're there to counsel and to be able to journey alongside not only of the patient, but also of the, uh, the patient's family, caregiver, significant other, what have you. I've heard you talk uh, at other times and talk about uh, the spiritual care providers, uh, their primary role is to be uh, l listening presence. What exactly does that entail? Right, the, the spiritual care provider is there to, to, to be seen and not necessarily heard. We're, we're there as a presence. We're not there to, with an agenda. We're mm -hmm. not there to be preachy or to share those items that may offend some. We're there to journey along with them and if the, the talk of God comes up, we will be there to help them through that. A in Washington County, we reach a vast uh, variety of different religions and faith traditions. And so we respect each person's faith tradition and then journey alongside of them 
and we will make that journey with them and help them through the end of life. That's terrific. Um, where, how many patients does uh, a chaplain see on any given day? And maybe I, should, maybe I should ask you, is the correct term chaplain or is it spiritual care provider or are they synonymous? Well, we're leaning more towards spiritual care provider at this time mm -hmm. uh, versus chaplain. Chaplain kind of sounds a little bit military at times perhaps or, or what have you, but uh, a chaplain, a spiritual care provider will, will see 30 to 35 patients per week, which would be about five to six per day. Now that will be in a home setting, perhaps at a nursing home, an assisted living, or even in the hospital uh, for those that are at the end of life as well. And while there, they will minister to the patient and obviously the family uh, as well. And then if you see one patient, you're also seeing a few family members. So, you know, you can do the math there and it's quite a few people that these spiritual care providers are ministering to each and every week. Does it feel like a, um, a gift that uh, you give to these folks or is it a gift back to you that they're willing to be present with you as well? Well, that's a great question. I, I would say both. You know, it's a gift for us to be there, for someone to invite us in, to be able to journey with them at the end of life is a blessing. And we take a lot out of that. When we leave that home or facility, nursing home, what have you, we just feel blessed that we were able to be there and to share those moments with that patient and with that family. So Dean, we just have a little bit of time, but I'm sure there's some difficult questions that arise at the end of life. Can you tell us what some of those uh, questions might be? Sure, a patient or family member may ask, um, is there a heaven? And if so, how can I know heaven is for real? That's a big term right now, is heaven for real? And so we'll journey along with them and look into some theological issues if that's what they decide. Uh, some other questions may be, um, how do I know that there's an afterlife? Or how can I receive forgiveness? You know, many patients have difficult lives and they've been through a lot of struggles and so we'll journey and help them through that with counseling them and being able just to journey and let them know that it's okay and it's okay to say goodbye it's okay to ask for forgiveness to a loved one at the end of life thank you dean for being here in caring for those with limited time hospice of washington county spiritual care providers willingly offer one of life's most precious gifts their presence mother Teresa, a woman who cared for the dying and who knew a great deal about being present to others said Quote, every time you smile at someone, it's an action of love, a gift to that person, a beautiful thing. I'm going to try to remember these words today, and I hope you will too. Maybe just by smiling, we can make the world a little bit more beautiful. We'll be right back after these messages. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care. Close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. This is our home. It's where we've all decided to put down roots and raise families. Not because we had to, because we wanted to. And as a business owner, you pour every ounce of energy into doing what's right for you in this community, and you won't and you don't stop until you get what you want. And neither do we. We're Antietam Cable Productions, and it's time to stand up and be seen and heard. You have a voice, and we'll help you tell your story. Antietam Cable Productions, putting the beat into the heart of your business. Hi, I am Dr. Olenzak at the Pain and Spine Institute. I specialize in the most advanced procedures and technology available in pain management. At your visits and procedures, you will always see me for continuity of care. I would like to thank all of my patients for allowing me to provide you with the specialized care that you need. To give you this level of care requires a team. This is your team at the Pain and Spine Institute. To become a patient, call 301-739-7900 or go to painfree-md.com. Welcome back to Healing Hope and Health. Earlier this year, Hospice of Washington County opened two community life centers, one in Hancock and the other in Hagerstown, and any day will soon be opening a third in Boonesboro. At the community life centers, professional counselors offer free grief counseling and other bereavement services. Also at the community life centers, area residents share their knowledge and expertise by presenting programs designed to build and strengthen the community. Our next guest, a veteran of the Armed Forces, approached Hospice of Washington County about leading a veteran self-help support group at the Hancock Community Life Center. Robert Bob Driscoll, author of Returning from My Brother, 
Finding Freedom After War, joins us today to talk about this, his program and his desire to support his fellow veterans. Thanks, Bob, for being here. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so, glad Bob, to be here. Can, can you tell us a little bit <coughs> about what armed uh, services you've served in and also where you served? I was in the Army for a little over two years. Uh, I started at Fort Gordon, Georgia for boot camp and advanced individual training. After that, I went to uh, Vietnam, July of 67 through 68. And after that, I returned and finished up my time at uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Okay, and what was your rank? I was a sergeant. Okay. Um, and why did you decide to uh, offer this self-help support group through Hospice of Washington County? Well, back in, in New England, where I come from... Um, we can tell by your accent. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that. Uh, there, was, there were plenty of uh, vet centers that allowed veterans to go and, and join groups and, and discuss some of the issues that they had. And I find there's very little down here, or unless you want to travel, um, as far as the veterans center. And hospice uh, asked me if I'd be interested in, in putting on a program and offered me a secured area, a safe area for veterans to meet and discuss their issues. And I know you've said that uh, when you returned from, and I read in your book too, that when you returned from your time in Vietnam, you felt like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. Right. How important is it for veterans to be able to talk to other veterans b due to their shared experience? Well, coming back from Vietnam, we weren't greeted as a lot of veterans are today, and it was unfortunate. Um, when you left Vietnam, you may have been shot at, and 36 hours later, you were on United States soil. Uh, you were never debriefed. You were put into a, uh, you were living in a combat survival mode. It got down to if things were done my way, you wouldn't get hurt and you wouldn't be killed. Um, today, veterans are coming home and they still have these problems. They, they are supposedly debriefed, but they're still the inner peace and the, the inner mercy that they're seeking that they want to talk about and they don't know who to talk to about it. And really only another veteran that has been through that experience. Can well, I, I find that people that have had a traumatic experience will loosen up, let's say, and, and be more comfortable talking to somebody that has had a similar experience. Okay. And, and war doesn't change, it's just a, a different enemy in a different time. So uh, hus many of the veterans that come back have suffered significant losses. They've lost uh, their fellow soldiers. Um, and hospice offers free uh, bereavement counseling for them. But uh, you were explaining to me that this camaraderie uh, many times enables uh, vets to open up to other vets in ways that they can't with other people. How do you explain that? Well, it's like I say, if somebody has a traumatic experience, whether it be war related or something else, that. I think it's a little easier to be able to speak to somebody that's walked that walk and and that that's been there and that's that's one of the reasons why I'm I'm volunteering to make myself available to have these people get together these the, these uh, veterans and and be able to talk about any issues that they have. And um, in your book, you talk about being diagnosed with PTSD. Is it possible for people to get past uh, and move beyond this trauma? I, I don't think anything in the past, you can't just let go of it. Um, it's a part of who you are? It's part of who you are. And the thing is, is that I've learned to accept what's happened because I can't do anything about that. What's happened has happened. Um, what you can do is, is move on. And, and Vietnam will always be a part of me, but it doesn't reside in my heart and it doesn't control everything that I do. Okay. And can you just tell us briefly where your, vet, your group will meet and on what days? It meets right now at the town hall upstairs on the second floor at the community center, life center in Hancock. Um, it meets on the first Tuesday of the month at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's great. And uh, all veterans are welcome to join you. All veterans, male, female, uh, whether you've been at war or not, uh, all you have, the only criteria is to be a veteran to join the group. Well, thank you so much for being here. I'd like to thank Mr. Driscoll for being here with us today and for his service to our country and his commitment to help his fellow veterans. Hospice of Washington County is proud to support those who have served our country. Abraham Lincoln said, honor to the soldier and sailor everywhere who bravely bears his country cause. Honor also to the citizens who cares for his brother as best he can, end of quote. If you're a veteran or you know a veteran who might benefit from attending this group, please call Hospice of Washington County 
at 301-791-6360. We'll be right back after these messages. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. From the smallest item of jewelry to the largest ceramic elephant, every 10,000 Village's handcrafted product makes a remarkable journey. All over the world, our products travel similar paths, over thousands of miles and years of artistic tradition. Our handcrafted gifts represent work that builds villages and sustains souls. They are the dream of a better life made real. Every product is a miracle. Welcome back. Our next guest is Maggie Terry, a clinical social worker and a bereavement care specialist for Hospice of Washington County. She's an experienced group leader and presenter, facilitating monthly support groups and seminars, and has been with Hospice of Washington County for six years. Maggie joins us today to tell us about some of the different support groups that are offered by Hospice of Washington County, and to tell how she incorporates art and relaxation techniques into the therapy that she provides. Hi Maggie, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much. So what different support groups are offered at Hospice of Washington County? Um, well, we have um, support groups that are open to anybody with any kind of a loss, and those are held four times a month. And um, people don't need to register for that, they can just come. Drop in. Exactly, and we have one that's held on in the mornings and one that's held in the evenings. Okay, great. Yeah. That's terrific. And how about do you have uh, support groups specifically for mm -hmm. certain uh, groups of people or certain yes. topics? Yes, we do. Um, we hold those for four weeks, once a week, and they might be specific such as loss of a spouse or loss of a child. So there's some educational components in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what are the benefits of joining a support group? What are the, the benefits that the people express that they get from attending? Um, most of all is the mutual understanding. Um, the person who can really understand what's going on with you is someone who's going through a similar situation. Mm -hmm. And it's really a wonderful thing to experience and watch and see friendships formed and see people supporting each other. And sometimes I just sit back, I'm just the facilitator. And do uh, these friendships that form, do they sometimes uh, continue outside of the group? Uh, yes, we've, we've actually had um, some couples who have met in a support group and later married. Oh, that's uh -huh. exciting. Yeah. So how can individuals interested in learning one of these support groups get more information about time, place, and topics? Uh, they just need to call hospice and ask for the bereavement department and then uh, call our main number. And that number is? 301-791-6360. Great. So do you support, uh, do you see individuals as well as offer support mm -hmm. groups, Maggie? I sure do. Um, we call that our one-on-one -on -one counseling. It's private confidential counseling with me. Um, and sometimes people need that if they're really experiencing a real difficult time or they're, we call it stuck in their grief. So do some of the people from the support groups also seek individual counseling? They can mm -hmm. do both? They can do both, absolutely. And sometimes um, I'll have a support group session and realize someone is really struggling and I might just talk with them after the group and suggest maybe a few one-on-one -on -one sessions might help them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What types of barriers uh, prevent people from moving forward and, and enable them to get stuck in their grief? Um, I would say the biggest barrier is um, the resistance that people have. Um, they've had this terrible loss in their life 
and they're working so hard to change it back or to keep everything normal, um, but that really can't be. So I find that just um, helping them through that and realize it is normal to want to change it back um, and just you know helping them ease up a little bit and not be so resistant mm -hmm. to their new life and and to establish a new normal I guess right mm -hmm. right helping mm -hmm. them with that mm -hmm. um, is it true that some losses are more difficult than other losses like a loss of a spouse or a loss of a child or um, what we find is it really depends on how attached the person was to the person they lost mm -hmm. um, that's the most important factor into how difficult uh, this grief is. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, you have used some interesting techniques in supporting mm -hmm. people through their grief. I was wondering if you would care to talk a little bit about either the relaxation therapy mm -hmm. techniques you use or the art therapy. Um, I'd love to. Um, mostly with children and teenagers, mm -hmm. I start with art. Um, mm -hmm. I find that it really eases the tension because um, they're always a little nervous to meet with someone. Um, we often do the art together. Um, and I find it's a great way for them to express themselves. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I had a child, I just asked him to draw a tree and he draw he drew a big tree with um, a hole in the middle and I just assumed it was a home for a squirrel or something like that. So I just asked him, I said, well tell me what that is and he said, well that's the hole inside me when my grandma died. Oh, So you see how, how powerful. powerful. Yeah. yeah, very powerful. Well Maggie, yeah. thank you so much for being here and for sharing that story today. I'd like to thank Maggie and also thank you for being with us on Healing Hope and Health. All of the counseling, support groups, and seminars offered by Hospice of Washington County are provided free of charge and are open to the public. If you or someone you know is interested in learning more about these services, call 301-791-6360 or visit our website at www.hospiceofwashingtoncounty.org. Barbers Carson Jewelers has been your community jeweler for over 110 years. We have the region's largest selection of diamonds, designer jewelry, including bridal, gold, and silver fashion jewelry, and fine Swiss timepieces. We strive to combine quality, expert personal attention, and affordable financing to create an exceptional shopping experience aimed at exceeding your expectations. At Carson's Jewelers, there's something for everyone that will bring a smile to that someone special in your life. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care. Close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. This is our home. It's where we've all decided to put down roots and raise families. Not because we had to, because we wanted to. And as a business owner, you pour every ounce of energy into doing what's right for you in this community, and you won't and you don't stop until you get what you want. And neither do we. We're Antietam Cable Productions, and it's time to stand up and be seen and heard. You have a voice, and we'll help you tell your story. Antietam Cable Productions, putting the beat into the heart of your business. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. Our last guest today is Bill Sulis, a man who graduated with a degree in engineering from MIT and whose work took him all over the world. To this day, Bill still is passionate about traveling and enjoys sharing his, ex his experiences with others. At its Hagerstown Community Life Center, Hospice of Washington County is starting a volunteer-led program called Armchair Travelers. This program invites area residents to share their travel experience through slides, stories, and music with others who, due to health restrictions or financial limitations, aren't able to do so. Bill is here today to tell us about his upcoming armchair travelers program he will present on Chile, Patagonia, and the Atacama Desert. 
Welcome, Bill. I'm glad you're here today. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. And I'd also like to, we'll take, we'll go out to Easter Island also. Oh, great. Yeah. Easter <laughs> Island as well. So tell me, um, do, you, do you enjoy talking about your travels? Yes, I do. I enjoy it very, very much. I like to share the experiences as well as, you know, experience the travel. So what do you enjoy most about uh, traveling to other exotic lands? To, to see different cultures and uh, to see scenery and uh, and to, to try to, as much as I can, sample the flavor of the country and the people of the country also. I don't so very do much you enjoy. try to experience the food, the music, The food, religion, the music, the like people, mm -hmm. the sites, the architecture, the scenery, yeah. everything. Do you speak other languages as well? No, unfortunately not. I did speak a little German because I spent a lot of time in Germany, but I never, I far from mastered it. Okay, I great. could get along, but not ma far from mastering it. Now your program is going to be on December 10th at the Hagerstown Life Center. Okay. Uh, can you tell our viewers a little bit about the format so they know what to expect? Okay, I'm going to, it's going to, uh, as if we're going to all take a trip to Chile. So we're going to fly to Santiago, the capital. We're going to tour that very vibrant and wonderful city with beautiful architecture architecture, modern and, and, and uh, uh, contemporary or previous era. We could take a trip to Valparaiso, Vina del Mar, the wine growing Casablanca Valley. We're going to go up into the Andes Mountains up around 10,000 feet and look at Valley Nevado. We're going to leave Santiago and then fly out to Easter Island, which is about 2,300 miles distant wow. in the Pacific Ocean. It's one of the most isolated spots in the world but it's loaded with these wonderful moai, uh, a, a huge statues from the Polynesian culture that inhabited that island. And then after uh, coming back from uh, Easter Island, we're going to fly up to Kalama, about a thousand miles north of Santiago, take a bus to San Pedro de Atacama, and from there tour the wonderfully high Atacama Desert, which by the way is one of the driest spots on earth. And we'll look at that and we'll even go up to a, a spot about 14,600 feet and look at the geysers up there. Then we'll go back to Kalama, take a flight back to uh, Santiago. From Santiago, we're going to take a flight to, to Punta Arena, and from Punta, which is about 1,400 miles from Santiago. And then we're going to take a bus to uh, Puerto Natali, which is about 120 miles distance, and from there tour that part of Patagonia, which is almost at the very southern tip of South America. And we'll look at glaciers and geysers and beautiful mountains and so forth. So how long, we're going to do this trip all in an hour and a half or two that's hours, right. but how long did it take you? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Well, that's so, and, it, and that uh, obviously just gives you a touch of the, the wonderful beauty of that, that very uh, exciting country. I can't wait to see this. Okay. Uh, what was your favorite part of your trip? My favorite part was the Atacama Desert. It, mm -hmm. It's so gorgeous up there, and, and, and saw the most spectacular sunsets and, uh, and uh, dry salt lakes. And, and then also I did like going up to the geysers at 14,000 feet. And uh, of course, it's, as I mentioned, it's so dry, you don't see snow in the mountains there. And the snow the behind them are mountains that go up, volcanic mountains that go up over, uh, over 20,000 feet. So um, all that beautiful scenery and then watching the sunsets and the play of light on the mountains to the east and the, and the play of light on the Andes. And you're going to be showing us some slides. I will show you lots okay, of slides. That sounds yeah, great. It's a gorgeous country. So do you have, uh, just we have just a little time, can you tell us any life lessons that you've learned through your travels? Okay, I, I think probably the tour through the Atacama Desert with the people there were, were so wonderful. I went to this little town, San Pedro de Atacama, which is almost like a a border town in, in Mexico, not, not many paved streets or so forth, and yet wonderful people took us on tours, and I met people from Korea, Scotland, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Just the and diversity. Peru, so yeah. I met, met a lot of people and was able to talk. Luckily, they all spoke English, so. Oh, <laughs> that's that great. But, and the guys were, were absolutely fabulous. It, it, it really was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Well, I'd like to thank you, Bill, for being here, and thank you for sharing your travel experiences mm -hmm. with us through our program. I'd also like to thank you, our viewers, for joining us on Healing Hope and Health. Whether people are talking with their next door neighbors or trying to communicate with speakers of foreign languages and exotic lands, it is in sharing life's experiences that we connect with others. Hospice of Washington County is pleased to invite would-be travelers to experience vicariously the excitement of traveling the world without ever leaving your armchair or having to pack a suitcase. If you would like to be a presenter or attend an armchair traveler, call Hospice of Washington County. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Oh.